Hello and welcome to a new Cubix tutorial. This time we are talking about post-processing and exporting. So actually I want to show you how to create a more interesting image out of your render. So how you can make your camera mapping scene look even more realistic and after that I'm showing you how to export this. So this is kind of the render you'll get and then I'm showing you how to create a footage or a look like this. So yeah, enjoy! So we're starting with depth of field and yeah, it's a bit hard to explain what depth of field is. It helps just the viewer to understand the depth of the scene and yeah, this is the effect, you, have, you see it. And um, to create this, actually this is pretty easy. First of all, this is our scene, or the scene I did. Maybe you have a scene similar to it. And now we add in an object to control the focus. And um, for this I hit Shift A and T plane axis, here it is. And moving this up a bit, yeah, I'm pressing C, now Ctrl and B to select a part to render, because I don't want to render the whole thing, just a specific part of the image to save a bit render. Yeah, energy or however. Now we select the camera. Actually, yeah, limits. Yeah. Now here you can see what what limits are, just that you can see where the focus is. Now we're selecting the empty and yeah. You can see the focus is now on the empty object. And if we set this to point zero one nine five and hit shift C we can see this nice effect. The background is blurred and we have this depth. And now we come to the compositing or the post-processing or however you want to call this. Actually, if you hit render, you come up with, with an image something like this. Pretty boring actually. And then I just added in a bit more contrast. I made the scene look or the image a bit more dramatic. First I made the image slightly brighter by using the hue saturation value node, desaturated it a bit and increased the value and afterwards I mixed it with the blend type set to multiply and a factor of by about 0.54 or so um, and then yeah the scene looks pretty more dramatic. And then I added in this, yeah, I call it film look. It actually gives it a, just a bit of washed out, mm, washed out brownish effect. Actually, is this is pretty cool. First of all, I added in this RGB curves. The C curve, I haven't touched this, just left this. Um, the R curve, I increased. I just made this here slightly, bumped this a bit up, and the G curve gives this a little bit an S shape, an S curve I created, and the B curve I just increased the amount of blues in the shadows and decreased it in the highlights. Actually, that's what I did in the vintage look tutorial, which I did before. Then I mixed it over the image using the color 
blend type color blend type just factor of one and uh, yeah I think it gives it a nice nice look then we come here to the vignette um, I showed this in the vintage look tutorial before first you just add in an ellipse mask and manipulate the size until it fits the image like this then you add in a blur to blur this and at last you mix it over the image using multiply a mix node set the blend type to multiply then you get this effect you can control the strength here pretty cool and last but not least no actually just before yeah yellow filter what I did the same thing as in the vintage look tutorial I added in RGB curve no RGB node yeah an RGB node and uh, selected such a slight slight yellow see that yellow greenish color and mix it over the image using a touch using a color mix node set the blend type to touch and um, this is the effect you'll get actually it gives it a bit more color gives it a bit more color back and now last the lens distortion what this actually does the distortion itself this is the distortion the distortion effect yeah see it it gives it an, a slight uh, fish eye effect if you set this to point zero one x effect and also this dispersion this is this actually it's too much but just a slight amount helps to look the, the photo or the video scene or however look more realistic you can see it here a bit in the edges that's that's the effect I wanted to achieve and that's basically my note setup not too not too complicated just a few things maybe you get inspired and do your own things with this So now it's time for exporting. First I set the resolution of the camera to a 21 by 9 format. Before it is, uh, here it is a 16 by 9 format and I'm setting it to a 29 by, 21 by 9 format actually. Um, and this is, yeah, just this cool format which is used in cinematic films so and um, important is to set the resolution to 100% and then we have the dimensions also we have to set the output so where you want to save this just go anywhere go to the desktop create a new directory direct directory sorry <laughs> directory um, call it renders or something you can remember which is which makes sense maybe you call this image underscore just give this a name and this is the name for every single frame and behind this it will get it uh, it will put the number of the frame so if it's frame 1 from 100 it's called frame or image underscore zero zero one yeah now we have the output actually if you render it I would recommend you to render first the whole video as single frames as images single images not as a video because 
if you're selecting QuickTime or H.264 or however, it will it will just create the video and if Blender crashes the video gets lost. Just lost you it is gone and if you have if you set this to JPEG or PNG or whatever, one of those um, and Blender crashes, the images it already has are safe and they won't get lost. So I have PNG here, compression, yeah you can can change this but it isn't needed. Sampling, actually this is the sampling. If you go to final, because this is the final render, you have 24 samples. Actually, that's good. In you know, most of the time you use you use uh, cycles. This is good, but we we don't use twenty four samples in this scene because yeah, it doesn't have to calculate any lights, and so the only thing because we have. Uh, why we have to set the samples amount a bit higher is this depth of field. Yeah, otherwise it would get really noisy. So we have this to, yeah, I found at least 15 um, to get a nice result. And then we come to the light paths. Paths, yeah, pretty hard to to spell. Um, yeah, that's, those are the settings. You can leave them, I guess, because you don't have any of those materials in your scene. So you can turn them down to zero to make pretty sure that it won't render any light for those materials, but you haven't got them, them so yeah, it doesn't matter. But um, the transparency, you can turn this down. If you turn the this all the way down to zero and uh, you'll see this those black parts which is really not what we want so you have this you have to set this to a minimum amount of one maximum amount of four um, and then I haven't got any problems by setting it to this. And yeah. And at last the performance. If you're rendering on a CPU, set the tile size to 16 by 16. And if you're rendering on a GPU, set this to 256 by 256 to achieve the best results, the fastest rendering. Uh, actually, it's yeah. We have to notice this really helps to render faster. And then you can hit animation. It will render every frame. Um, will render every frame. Yeah. And then you have them where you save them. Actually, um, I can show you how this looks. Yeah, just a folder full of images there, as I said, picture zero, 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 one. Yeah, then, um, then you need to create a video. So I'm making a, ah, come on. You go in a blank scene, new scene, go to video editing, hit shift A, hit image, yeah actually here I'm in the folder, just navigate to where you have your images, select everything by hitting A, enter and here you are. Maybe you set the, the end to the end of the animation, go here to properties 100% yeah 
yeah the format I have to set this right 200 2560 yeah um pretty good set the output to wherever you want this maybe go to desktop create a new directory video give this video name final and then you can select there QuickTime or H2 H.264 whatever you want I'm using QuickTime because yeah I'm using a Mac computer and otherwise I would get problems with QuickTime and so on so just um, using the QuickTime format we have the resolution yeah that's everything and then you can hit animation and then you have the video really it's that easy and in this way I think we're done so and here are two more videos about camera mapping actually the one on the left hand side is about how to do camera mapping and the one on the right hand side is about yeah it's just trailer to these two videos and yeah I think that's it if you like this video just show it give a thumbs up and if you think I could do this better just tell me what I could do better how you think I could do this better just leave a comment and hopefully we see us next time thanks for watching bye